Hey everybody, Richard here with CRG Games, and I've got another commander deck for you. So this is a buddy's deck. It is Azusa, Lost But Seeking, and this is what I would consider a budget deck. So the run, uh, this deck is running about $125. There are two cards that are over $10, and if you take those out, this will be a sub $100 deck. It's actually pretty good. So it's mono green, focuses on ramp, and playing big stompies, and it's got some combos in there that I think you guys will like. So... If you like the video, go ahead and hit like, and if you don't like the video, there's a thumbs down button as well. Subscribe if you're not already for more deck videos, and let's get into it. So Azusa Lost But Seeking says you may play two additional lands on each of your turns, so you could play up to three lands, not including any ramp. She does only cost three, she's not super expensive. I want to say maybe... This version I want to say is about $8, but you can certainly get her for less than that. So, start out with some artifacts. We've got Viridian Longbow. And this has the ability where if you equip this to a creature, you can tap the creature. And it deals one damage to target creature or player. So you can ping, um, you know, if anybody has like mana dorks on the board, like a, um, a Birds of Paradise, for example, you can take care of it with this. We've got Hadron Archive for a little bit of card draw. Thornbite Staff. This does the same thing as Viridian Longbow. But... Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, you get to untap this creature, and that's very important, especially if you put it on something that has a uh, ramp, for example. Skyclave Pickaxe. This is one of my um, favorite Zenikar Rising equipments because when you play it and when it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control, and a lot of the uh, Zenikar Rising artifacts have that ability. It's, pr it's pretty nice. However... It has a little bit of a drawback that the equip cost is a little on the high side uh, for something with a 1 CMC. But equipping it to target creature is very nice, and that has a landfall effect. We've got a Soul Ring. Bow of Nylea, so attacking creatures you control have Death Touch. And you can pay 2 and tap and put a 1-1 counter on target creature. Uh, or it deals 2 damage to target creature with flying. Or you gain 3 life. Or... Put up the four cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order. So, uh, Bow and Ilya has a lot of utility uh, for only being three mana. We've got a Thought Vessel for no maximum hand size. Nemesis Mask. This will um, make the equipped creature have all creatures able to block equipped creature do so. We've got Blanchwood Armor. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each forest you control. There's about 40 forests in here, 39 or 40 forests, so you have the potential to uh, get a really big creature very easily for this, especially mid-game. And we've got Sight of the Scale Lords. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control with toughness 4 or greater, you get plus 2, plus 2 in Vigilance. It's uh, very easy to get um, things with 4 toughness or greater in this deck, so that uh, is a pretty nice little enchantment. We've got a Lure. All creatures able to block Enchanted Creature do so. Evolutionary Leap. This will help you get creatures out of your deck. Then we've got Ranger's Path. This is for ramp. Naturalize is for removal. And there's a decent amount of removal, uh, mainly artifacts and enchantments, but that's still really important, especially in mono green. We have Primeval Light. Destroy all enchantments target player controls. So we got Recross the Paths. This is for um, ramp. And it has a nice effect called Clash. So... It says, reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Put that into play and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And then you clash. So what you'll do is both players will reveal the top card of the library. And whoever has the highest CMC wins. And if you win, you get to return recross the paths to its owner's hand. So that's a really nice effect. You can use it multiple times. We've got time of need. Search your library for a legendary creature. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Then shuffle. We've got Nature's Claim. This is for removal. And also, you could use it on something that you own for life gain. Lead the Stampede. This will help you get creatures. Sylvan Scrying. This is for land. Nissa's Pilgrimage. Also for um, ramp. Reclaiming Vines. That is for removal. Ancient Stirrings. This will help you get a, um, a colorless card. So that could be an artifact. And there are creatures in here uh, that you could get as well. We've got Lay of the Land. Nissa World Waker. This is a really cool one. She costs five, but her plus one here in the middle is untap up to four target forests. So effectively, her cost becomes one. She almost pays for herself. 
Um, Ujin, the Spear Dragon, is just a very strong uh, card overall. This is the most expensive card in this deck at about, I want to say like 35 bucks. We've got Rogue's Passage, of course. And then for the, some of the creatures we've got, we've got Kogel the Titan Ape. And he's really cool because when ETBs, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Because of the amount of ramp in this deck, you can actually get him out really early. And then whenever it attacks... You destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Um, that is really cool because, again, it's removal, but on a creature, and it's an attack trigger. Now, his last ability, pay two and return target human you control to its owner's hand. Kogla gains indestructible. There are humans in this deck, and Azusa is actually a human, so you can return her to your hand, and then he gets indestructible, and then you can play her again. That'll help her from getting uh, destroyed or removed or things like that. Sylvan Carotid, probably one of the best defenders. Um, I think it's from Theros. It has Hexproof, and it adds one mana of any color to your mana pool. Artisan at Kozilek. This is a colorless creature, so you could get it with Ancient Stirrings. It has Annihilator 2, and it has uh, Graveyard Recursion. We've got Bellowing Tangleworm, which is great because it gives um, other green creatures you control Intimidate. Most of the creatures are green, so they will have Intimidate. We got Lana War Elves, Mana Dork, and then we got Bane of Balagad. It's pseudo um, Annihilator. Uh, defending player exiles two permanents he or she controls. That's really rough, especially if you're on the receiving end. Hornet Nest is a great one. I We used to play this card a whole bunch back in the day, and you'll notice that a lot of the cards in this deck are from like 2016 and back. Um, that's kind of like. I would say that was like the heyday of my playgroup's playtime. Like we would, this is when we were going to Walmart, getting packs and everything like that, and building decks before we started playing Commander, actually. And uh, Hornet Nest, one of us was always playing a Hornet Nest. Whenever it's dealt damage, you put that many one-one green insect creature tokens of flying and death touch on the battlefield, so you can very quickly just flood the field uh, with Hornets, and it sucks to be honest. It sucks to be on the receiving end or trying to get through the bees. Not the bees. <laughs> uh, we got Deadly Recluse, uh, Reach and Death Touch, Hero's Bane. If you need to get rid of excess mana because you can produce a lot in this deck, this is a great way to do it. Or any of the creatures with Monstrous, like Arbor Colossus here. We got Mana Gorger Hydra. We always used to play Mana Gorger Hydra too. Um, I had a, a standard deck at the time where I ran four of these. And you, I think it was Mono Green. Um, Mana Gorger Hydra, um, Hardened Scales, you know, like a whole bunch of cool stuff. And a Collected Company, like, it was fun. It was a fun deck. I need to build that again if I can remember, like, all of the cards that I had in it. Uh, we got Whisper of the Wilds, Roaring Primadox. At the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Not a big deal. Archetype of Endurance. This is really cool because it gives all of your creatures hexproof. And then all the creatures opponents control lose Hexproof, and can't gain or have Hexproof. Very nice. Colossus of Akros. We used to play this one a lot back in the day. Um, he's got Defender and Instructable. And then with your excess mana that you'll probably have, you can pay 10 and give him Monstrosity 10. So now he can attack. He has Indestructible and Trample, and he's a 20-20. That's rough for anybody to go up against. We got Arbor Elf. Soul of New Phyrexia. World Breaker, Devoid. Then we've got Acidic Slime. This is for removal. I mean, it's a creature, yes, and it has Death Touch, but it's also for removal, being able to destroy Artifact, Enchantment, or Land. We've got Paragon of Eternal Wilds. Uh, Movani Beast Tracker. ETB, search your library for a creature card with Death Touch, Hexproof, Reach, or Trample. So this is a great card because you get to you get to choose you know, what you want to get out of your library. And it's kind of tailored, helps you tailor it to the situation. Ulamog's Crusher, this is Annihilator 2, and it attacks each turn of Fable. We've got Prey Upon, Terra Stomper, we played this a lot back in the day as well. Stuffy Doll, it uh, has Indestructible, and you choose a player, when this is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. And then you can tap it, it deals one damage to itself. So, always a great one if you can ping this thing a bunch. Um, you can do a lot of damage to your opponents. Then you've got Elvish Mystic and Birds of Paradise. Thornbite Staff is actually probably a good one to put on Stuffy Doll. Because if a creature dies, you can untap it, and then you can tap this. 
and then it'll do that damage again and so on and so forth it'll keep recycling we've got path razor of ulamog with annihilator engulfing slagworm that'll help you gain life team or saber tooth that'll help you return uh, creatures to your hand and then this gets indestructible hydra broodmaster give you that uh, monstrosity there and then it's hydra broodmaster is crazy because if you got a bunch of mana when it becomes monstrous you put x x x green hydra creature tokens onto the battlefield and it's it's rough it can be really rough for your opponents we got karametra's acolyte because it's mono green your devotion should always be pretty high so that'll be a, a large mana producer We've got drove of the elves and then we've got roughly 39 or 40 forests of all different types here. All different uh, printings. Most of it's going to be older. You know, pre-2016, a lot of 2014, you know, Origins, that kind of, you know, that time frame. Some Battle for Zendikar in there. Those are probably the newer ones. And, uh, and yeah, there's about uh, 30, 40 lands. And again, you can play up to three when you've got a Zeus out per turn. So you want to have a good bit of lands out. And you got a couple things in here for searching creatures out. A um, couple things for card draw. Not necessarily a ton. Uh, if it were me, I might put a little more card uh, card draw in there. But it's a competent deck. If you take two cards out, it's less than $100. Um, as it stands, it's about 125 And you know what? I've played against this deck. I don't know, a dozen times or more. And um, it hangs with the best of them. So it's it's really not that bad. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I've got more deck videos coming. Uh, my buddy, he gave me one, two, three, four decks to do. And some other ones are a little bit stronger. We've got a Kenan um, deck coming up as well. That one can be like turn two or three. That one's, that one's hard. That one's hard to beat sometimes. But uh, again, I hope you guys enjoy. If you like the video, again, throw a thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Subscribe if you're not already. And until next time, I'll catch you later.